Hey, it's Michael with the Y, and you're listening to My Reality Recap, the only podcast where I get to talk about all of my feelings towards the shows that I love. Today, we're going to talk about the most memorable year for the contestants on Dancing with the Stars, what kind of makeups the artists did on Face Off, how the tribe switch on Survivor changed the game, the real women makeover on Project Runway, and the bootyful music video on America's Next Top Model. I hope you're ready for this, so put your glasses on and get ready to get your tooch on with me. I am flying 100% solo today for this episode. I have no co-host. You guys just all get to listen to me. I'm totally feeling like Lily Makovitz from Princess Diaries with her Shut Up and Listen show. And I hope it is really good and you guys like it. So if you get tired of listening to me, uh, make sure you tweet me and tell me to never do this again. And I will listen. So I want to start talking about Dancing with the Stars first. It was the most memorable year for the contestants. And so... The contestant, Alexa Penavega from Spy Kids, her most memorable year was when she got Spy Kids. Alex and Lindsay, his most memorable year was the last year when he saved the people from that train. And Paula Dean's most memorable year was when she got divorced because it really set her free and she could do lots of stuff. And so I'm just going to talk about a couple of the other dances that happened. Tamar and Val, her most memorable year was the year her husband almost died. And it was really traumatic for her because it was a love of her life and he was basically about to die. And so she did this beautiful rumba and they got a 27 out of 30 and they were tied for second place. But I just want to point out, she is like one of the the best dancers there, but she's not that likable. Like she's like so hard for me to like and try to enjoy to watch. I, I don't know. There's just something off about her and I don't know what it is. Nick Carter and his partner Sharna did a dance to the Backstreet Boys because his most memorable year was the year the Backstreet Boys started. And so they did the dance to Backstreet's Back High. And they also got a 27 out of 30, tied for second place. Bindi and Derek did a tribute to Bindi's dad, Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. And she got a 28 out of 30. It was the first time any contestant this season has got a 10 for the dance. And I just want to point out one more time that they are giving her such a good edit. I don't understand why they try to make Bindi seem like this. I mean, she is like a perfect kid. And I was at the bar this weekend and I was talking to some guys about Dancing with the Stars because people know me as a reality TV guy. And they were like, I just love her. And I'm like, why do they make her seem so perfect? And they just said that it's because she is. So maybe she really is just perfect. But she wasn't perfect enough to get a 30 out of 30. But maybe that'll happen in the future for her. So a couple other things I want to mention from this episode is Allison. She is partnered with Andy Grammer. Allison is a professional. She announced that she is pregnant. And so she is three months along already. I think it was three months. And when the show ends, if she's still on it, she'll be six months pregnant, dancing in the ballroom with her little baby. And I'm kind of sad because she is like my favorite professional. And so that means she's not going to be on next season because she's going to have just had a baby and she can't dance. Although I guess Shakira did just come out after eight months of being pregnant and she had her abs back and everything. So, I mean... Maybe next year at this time, we'll get to see Allison again. Anyways, congrats, Allison. You're going to have a beautiful little baby, and you're beautiful, so go you. The eliminated contestant this week was Gary Busey and his partner, To Russia With Love, Anna. They got a 16 out of 30 this week, and it was time for him to go. He was always at the bottom of the pack. And next week is the switch up on Dancing with the Stars. So all week long, everybody has been tweeting which contestant they want to see dance with this professional. And I just want to say, if Derek Huff is not paired up with Paula Dean, I'm going to be very pissed off because he needs to have a challenge because this guy is just always getting the easy road to the finals. Yes, he is beautiful, but he still needs to have a challenge every so often. Okay, I'm done with Dancing with the Stars. Let's go to Face Off for a little bit. It is down to the final six on Face Off, and they had a focus challenge this week. They had to create a human who has evolved to survive a future Earth scenario. This meaning like an asteroid hitting the Earth, a nuclear fallout, or a volcanic disaster. They had to create somebody who would be able to adapt to these changes that would happen. And it's a focus challenge, and so that means they had to focus on the face. They don't have to worry about doing crazy things for the chest and hair and the whole look. Just really make sure the face is down. And my favorite, Nora had a big breakdown and she was like crying as she was working and it made my heart really sad because she's the one that I want to win. So my favorite look this week was actually Jordan. He is probably one of the guys that is going to win this. He did an Ice Age makeup and it was really cool. It had, it kind of looked like a Hagrid from Harry Potter, a really big 
guy with really old age makeup and a beard and it had some way to adapt so the sunlight could come into his skin so that way it could keep him warm because he had to survive the ice age. I don't really get the whole story, but it looked cool. And he was actually a top look. And the other top look was Evan. And he had this cool, like, severe drought desert guy who would be able to save moisture with his mask or something. I don't know. It looked pretty cool. And that was actually the look that won. So good job to Evan. And the bottom looks were Ben. He had a volcanic disaster. And it looked like a mess. Like, he did a really bad paint job. And if you have a volcanic disaster the person wouldn't have any hair left because the volcano the volcano would like fringe or take away your hair and this girl still had her hair and it didn't make any sense and so he was definitely a bottom look and the other bottom look was Stevie the very quiet shy girl who always does really good makeups she had a polar melting and she did like this weird fish thing and she ended up doing a really bad paint job on it and she didn't set it straight so it was kind of crooked on the model at for the when they were doing the showcase to the judges, and Stevie was actually the one eliminated. So now there is one girl left and four guys, and I've always said this, they always get rid of the girls on the show and always end up being guys in the end, and I don't get it because these girls are really good. Ugh, okay. So Face Off is almost done, and so if you guys haven't started watching this show, Halloween is around the corner. You need to start watching it because you're going to get some great ideas for the makeups that you guys can do on yourself or some inspiration for some crazy costumes to walk around in that nobody else is going to do. This show was great. It's genius. It won like Critics Choice Award for best reality show. Jump on board. I love it. We can talk about it. Tweet me and we'll just have a jolly old time. My favorite show Survivor this week did some craziness. They had a tribe switch and usually on Survivor when there is a tribe switch they go they just have the two tribes and they mix them up. This time they had two tribes and they broke them down into three. So that means that there are three types of six now. And so we have the Bayon, which is the magenta, Takeo, which is green, and the new Anglor tribe, which is gold. And whichever tribe drew the gold buff had to make a whole new camp all by themselves because the other two tribes already had their camps made because that's where they've been living. So whoever got gold got the short end of the stick. And I was just really nervous. I was really hoping that Jeff and Abby would at least be together because I really love the edit that they're giving them and they just seem like it's going to be crazy they make it to the merge together, and they did. So my little black heart was very happy inside. I also loved that Sierra and Cass were stuck together because those two are my homegirls, and they're like best friends, and I just think they can just make some black magic happen soon. And Kelly is with them now, and Kelly is the girl that has the hidden immunity idol. And so I'm like, if these three girls can like work together... It is going to be a powerhouse, and it's going to remind me of the Black Widow Brigade that Parvati had in Micronesia, and it's just going to be so amazing. Stir the pot. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, that's stir the pot. That's just like well, Halloween, and that's coming up. Halloween's my birthday. Make sure you guys all tweet me. Back to Survivor for a second. Also, I'm surprised I haven't done more tangents like that, because when I'm alone and I talk to myself, I go off on a lot of tangents, and this is another one. Okay, back to Survivor. Jeremy found the hidden immunity clue on the Bayon tribe. So the idols this time are at the challenge. So at the immunity challenge, it was a thing where they had to take a cart and pick up all of these big cases of puzzle pieces. And they had to take the cart apart. And on one of the totes, not totes, one of the, what the hell is it called? One, I'll just say tote. One of the totes that had the puzzle pieces, it had the hidden immunity idol under it. And he got it and he stuck it in his pant pocket. Nobody saw it. So good job, Jeremy. And it wasn't as intense of a moment as when Kelly got her idol. But it was still good from chests. They're big chests. It was like a big chest full of puzzles. That's what it was. And so it gets down to a puzzle at the end because every survivor challenge comes down to a puzzle. Because they're all like stressed out from lifting and doing all this crazy stuff and it tests their mind. And the first tribe to win immunity was Takeo. The second tribe was Bayon. And that left the brand new Anglor tribe at the bottom going to tribal council. But what really confused me was all of a sudden Tasha yells, We have a rat! We have a rat on our tribe! And I was like, what the hell happened? Apparently, Jeff Varner looked over at Kelly Wigglesworth. I think it was Kelly Wigglesworth, not Wentworth. Kelly Wigglesworth. And said something to her after they lost the challenge which is a no-no on Survivor. You don't talk to other people from the tribes, even if they are your friends. And I didn't catch it. 
Some of my friends texted me, they're like, what was that? And I'm like, I don't know, I didn't catch it either. So I don't know if it was like the cameras didn't pick it up at the challenge or what, but something happened. Jeff was in hot water and he was freaking out and Jeff has like this game on lock. And so he was like panicking. I was panicking for him and they go back to camp and the tribe of six was Tasha, Savage, Wu, PG, Abby, and Jeff. And four of them were on the original Bayon was it Bayon? No, Takeo tribe. So four of them had an alliance to begin with, and the other two were on the bottom of the totem pole. And so with this whole thing happening with Jeff, everybody was like, do we flip? Do we vote Jeff out? But we have the numbers, and Abby decided that she didn't want to vote for um, Savage and Tasha, and she wanted to vote at one of her own. And PG was like, well, that's not cool. Or PG was like, okay, I'll just do the same. But then Abby and PG decided to both vote for each other, and so it turned into this big battle as to who's going to go home, Abby, Maria, or PG. And I'm team Abby. Like, she is, like, who I would align with. I would take her to the end because you can easily beat her. But it would be so fun just to be around her, I think. And she's entertaining. Like, I just love the fire that she has inside of her. I mean, it would stress me out, like, being in alliance with her. But it would keep me entertained for 39 days. And so we get to tribal council. And by a 4-2 to two vote, PG was voted out. So Abby was once again safe, and Wu was blindsided. I mean, PG was blindsided too, but Wu is always blindsided. I don't get how this guy can keep going on Survivor and get blindsided every time and not do something to change the way he plays the game. This is your second chance, Wu. Why are you doing the exact same thing? Get in the game, make something happen, please, or just get voted off. Like If you got voted off, I would be okay with that. Just, just do something. Go somewhere. I don't know. So Survivor is really good. Felt really good about it. I feel good talking about it by myself. So this is the part of the podcast where I need to take a couple moments to talk about my sponsor. This week, it is provided by White With Style. It's an awesome teeth whitening company that has an awesome FDA-approved technique to whiten your teeth with a fancy LED light. Now, if you're like me and you drink a ton of coffee, this little gem will help you keep your teeth looking white and pretty for all of the boys and girls out there. And because White With Style is just awesome, they're offering all of you beautiful people who listen to this podcast a special offer on your first starter kit. It is originally $269, but you get it for the beautiful price of $28. Visit www.whitewithstyle.com and enter the code Michael with a Y at the checkout to get your discount. Once again, that's whitewithstyle.com and the code Michael with a Y. Now that that is out of the way, let's move into Project Runway. This week, they did a Real Women Makeover Challenge, and they actually got to make over members of the Project Runway crew. So they had like the girl who does the camera, the music, the lady who's in charge of all the models, they gave them a makeover. Seeing the behind the scenes from the show made me really want to work on it. Like, I've always wanted to work on Top Model and do photo shoots, but I was like, Top Model only happens once a year. Project Runway is like twice. I can just work on the set of Top Model and then go be behind the scenes of Project Runway and just be around fashion all the time. Be a happy camper. It's perfect. So the thing the designers had to keep in mind is that they need to make their client happy and design a piece for them but it still has to have their design and aesthetic to it because it is a runway challenge and you are on Project Runway, so you have to be creative while making your client happy. And Ashley was super drained from inspiration. She was just having such a hard time. And she actually got a full-figured woman to design clothes for, and she is a full-figured women designer. So you would think, perfect, she can just do whatever she wants. This is her element. But she was struggling. She couldn't get something to work for this woman. And I'm like, Ashley, what the hell? And Swapnil was just wasting so much time. They gave him two days for this challenge. They usually get one, but they gave him two days. And each time they had a model fitting come in, he didn't have anything ready for his client. And his model had the request of, she wanted at least something to cover up her arms because she was insecure about her arms. And the first outfit didn't do that. The second one was just really showy and crazy. And so he scrapped that. And then he whipped up an outfit in two hours at the last day and it had like a stupid cape on it to distract everybody but the arms were unfinished and so there was like seams everywhere it was tied in a knot in the back under the cape like he didn't finish it and he had two days and he couldn't make one outfit for his client and she was not happy and I felt really bad for her because she was a cute little girl so talking to the runway I just talked about swap a little bit he was a bottom look for sure um, my favorite this week was Kelly. Kelly is my favorite this season. I just love what she does. She reminds me of like Katy Perry for some reason. She did this awesome leather overall with a tank and this cool vest. 
And when her model walked down the runway, that girl just looked so confident and so happy. And I was like, I kind of want a pair of overalls like that. That's kind of in. I could do it. I could rock it maybe. Might make me look small, but I can try it. And the other favorite was Marlene. And she did this cool little rocker vest and dress. And it was not really what Marlene does because she has the weird architectural stuff with weird shoulders. But her client didn't want that at all. She was like, I do not want any of your shoulder stuff that you do, Marlene. Because they, the, they're from the crew, so they know what the person can do. And she's like, I don't want that. Don't do it. She didn't do it, but she still made a great piece. And Kelly and Marlene were actually the top looks from the judges' scores. And everybody else was on the bottom. Like, they only had the top two favorites. The winning look was Kelly. So congrats, Kelly. And the eliminated contestant was Swapno. He was supposed to be this great designer. He just didn't bring his A-game, but he's gone. And now it's down to the final five. And I am like really nervous because the final five is the people that I predicted would get to the end. I mean, Marlene has been like the wild card. You don't know if she's good or bad, but she's been on a roll. And it's going to be really interesting to see who goes home next because they're so close to the finale and everybody is so good. I'm going to go out on a limb. And I think that Ashley is going to be the winner of the season just because she is the plus size designer. She does have the story. They are giving her this great edit. And so, yeah, Ashley is going to be my pick to win. I don't necessarily want her to win, but she's going to win. And I think Candace, Edmund, and Kelly are going to be sure ins to come back for the next Project Runway All-Stars. Or at least hopefully, because I want to see more Kelly. On America's Next Top Model this week, they did a booty full music video. Oh, wait, hold on. Before I talk about this episode, I need to address something that happened to the news revolving around my homeboy, Niall. And he was asked if he likes guys or girls, and he said he is fluid. And I didn't know what that meant, so I had to Google it. And that means he likes both boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, that means I have a chance with Niall from America's Next Top Model. Who knew? I've been making all these weird noises every time I see his picture and talk about him. I could actually make something and live happily ever after with Niall. Huh. Okay, I just had to get that out of my system. Oh, okay, talk about the episode, Michael. So the episode started with a cliffhanger from last week because last week one of the eliminated contestants was coming back in and one of the old models or the remaining models was going to be eliminated. So Dustin, the young, hot 18-year-old who was still in high school, got brought back into the competition and... We were waiting to see who's going to be eliminated between Devin and Justin, and Justin, Jay Smooth, was eliminated. So Devin, once again, was safe. He's been in the bottom two, like, the last two or three weeks, I think. So the final seven are going to Las Vegas. Las Vegas as in America, which is super lame because out of all of 22 seasons, they've only gone to other countries except the Petite Cycle. They went to Hawaii. Is that how you say it? Or can you say, like, Hawaii? I'll just say Hawaii. And they are going to Las Vegas, which I think is so stupid. I'd be so upset. Like, if I was on Top Model, I'd be like, I'm going to go to Rome, take me to Czech Republic, let's go to China. Las Vegas? Really? Anyways, it's a free trip, I guess, and they have to be grateful. But I'd be a little disappointed. I'd be like, I got my passport for nothing. They had a pool party once I got to Vegas, and Don Benjamin from Cycle 20 was there. He's a DJ, and he's actually a singer, I think. And so he's in Vegas, and their challenge was to jump into a pool with their clothes on and they had one shot to do it and they had a different story and it was like a party because Vegas is all about a party. The top three contestants were Hadassah, Mame, and Dustin and Lacey had a great photo but she put the sunglasses in front of her face so you couldn't see her face and Niall was too much of like a party and so they were like the bottom and the score and I was like ooh so nervous and Mame was actually the winner of the challenge and this was actually her fourth challenge win and she wins the challenges, but she doesn't get best photos because that is for Lacey and Niall. The music video that they had was Bootyful, and it was because Tyra has her own beauty cosmetics, not line, cosmetics experience. And you get to be a beauty tainer and make some money and help Tyra make money, of course. And so they're making a music video for her company, and the song is Bootyful by an artist called Story. And Tyra was directing it, so all the models were lip-syncing to the song and remember Niall is deaf and so he was he was listening to the music in his with his headphones so he could hear the beats and try to get the beats down and he would look at the words and so he would lip the words as he was going to the beat 
and they would help him. And so while they were filming, Tyre would give him a countdown like one, two, three, four, and then he would do his whole like click, click and go right to the beats. And he didn't miss a single beat. And it was pretty awesome to see. And while they're on set, Dustin, the guy, the 18 year old, was flirting with all the other extras. He was like, have you seen my Instagram? You should add me on Instagram. And yes, he does have a ton of following on Instagram because he does have a beautiful body. But he was flirting and Hadassah was very annoyed by the whole thing. And they had two days of shooting. They did a little bit in a penthouse and they were in a club and crazy outfits. And they had to walk the runway with Tyra. And getting to the judging... Mikey did a great rocker model vibe thing and Kelly was all for it and he actually got best performance for the episode and the bottom two performances were Hadassah and Dustin. The comeback boy was in the bottom because he wasn't focused at the photo shoot or the music video shoot and so drumroll please the eliminated model was Dustin, what a waste. He comes back and he gets eliminated that next episode. Pointless. They should have brought somebody else back. I'm over it. Whatever. But I'm curious to see what's going to happen in the next remaining episodes. I just realized this morning that only Lacey or Niall can win. Like, only one of them gets to win. And that's just heartbreaking to me because I, both, I want both of them to win. They're both so good. Uh, I guess I'll just have to pick a favorite at some point. So I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me talk to myself about all these TV shows this week. And I'm really grateful for all of you listeners because I have so much fun doing this. And if you like what you heard, please click that subscribe button and give this podcast a five-star rating. It'll make me feel really good inside. And I want to keep the conversation going with all of you. Tweet me at Michael with a Y or hashtag MYRR to let me know all of your thoughts and feelings about the shows you talked about today or what shows you want me to talk about in the future. Make sure to keep up with me on social media. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Michael with a Y, and that is spelled exactly as it is on here. Don't forget to smile, and remember, glasses are sexy.